Hi, I'm glad you're joining me today. Uh, I'm here to continue our study in the parables of Jesus. I have chosen uh, the shortest uh, the shortest of the parables. It's only one verse long. As a matter of fact, it is so short that I'm going to cover two parables that cover a grand total of three verses. They are found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. Here's the way it reads. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So what we have here is the, the, the uh, parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the pearl of great value. Basically, the message is the same for both of these. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven, which I, I believe that uh, uh, the phrase the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are interchangeably used in scripture. And what Jesus is talking about here is the value that should be placed in being a part of God's kingdom. How valuable to you, how valuable to me, is having a relationship with the Lord. I think that really is the bottom line of what's being gotten at here. But, of course, it's in parable form, and so there's, there's kind of a story that's attached to it. The first one has to do with this treasure hidden in a field. Now, that may sound like it's like some far-fetched, crazy story, like a treasure hidden in a field. I mean, whoever finds a treasure hidden in a field? The reality of the matter is that was a thing uh, in that part of the world. Israel uh, was well known for having had many, many raids over the, the years and the centuries and even invasions. And so what people would do with their valuables is they wouldn't just leave it in their house because as soon as uh, the area was being raided, um, it would be gone. It would be taken. They couldn't just stick it in a bank, uh, primarily because there weren't hardly any banks. But what banks were there, they would be like the first target that would be hit, you know, if you had some invading army coming in. And so what people would do is they would take a clay jar or a chest or something or other, and they would put their valuables, as soon as they heard word that there was some invading force coming, um, they put all their valuables in that, and then they hid it. Either it was like in a cave uh, somewhere on their land, or they would dig a hole near a landmark of some type, and so that way they knew where it was, and they could go and retrieve it after the threat had passed. However, that was a problem. What if, in the process of things, they were taken captive and taken away from their home? Or what if, worse yet, they were killed and they hadn't told anybody about where they had hidden their valuables at? Now, all of a sudden, there's a treasure hidden somewhere that nobody knows about. And years might pass, decades might pass, and maybe even longer than that, uh, as far as time goes, would pass. And no one would be any the wiser until one particular day someone stumbles upon it. Now, see, that's really far-fetched to us because it's like in our experience, who of us have ever done that sort of thing? You know, I grew up spending quite a bit of time in fields. You know, I grew up uh, going fishing uh, at farm ponds all the time. So I was always going across pastures and stuff like that, all the surrounding area of where I lived. Um, and I like to hunt too, rabbit and squirrel hunting. And so I was out in fields doing that sort of thing. Um, I worked for several area farmers, whether it was putting up hay, straw, alfalfa, walking beans, what, whatever the case might be. You know, there was a variety of reasons. I spent time out in fields. Now, I don't recall ever stumbling upon treasure. I mean, I kind of recall one time back over behind our house, uh, there was this ravine where some of the people from town would dump some of their trash. 
And I remember one time when I was like uh, seventh grade or so, um, I was digging through some of that trash and I found a box uh, that had, believe it or not, it had postman pants in it. Yeah, this is what the postal carriers carried. And, and the pants were like brand new. And so in a sense, I thought, well, that's kind of like treasure, you know? So I took it, took it home and a couple of friends of mine at school, you know, there was a pair that each of them took out of the box that fit them. And of course I uh, found one that fit me and we would arrange it so that on a certain day, all three of us would wear our postman pants to school. Okay, it sounds kind of weird when I'm telling the story now, but we thought we were cool back then. So in that sense, I guess I stumbled upon a treasure. Uh, but I think that's about as close as I ever got to stumbling upon a treasure out in a field. Well, the thing is, though, in Israel, that was the sort of thing that happened. And people told stories about that. Word would really spread. You, you can just imagine some people, you know, kind of daydreaming, thinking, oh, man, if only one day I could stumble upon an old treasure. And, and uh, well, so that's why this story, it would have registered with people back then. Now, the second part, the second parable there uh, is different in that the guy isn't stumbling upon anything. It involves a merchant who is deliberately looking for a pearl of great value and then eventually finds it. So what happens in both of these stories is that when the guy stumbles upon a treasure and finds that, he goes and sells all of his possessions, takes all that money and buys the field, and thereby comes in ownership of the treasure. The guy that's looking for the pearl of great value, when he finds it, he goes and sells everything he's got, and he gives you know, all of that in exchange for that pearl. You see, the message here is, how valuable is the kingdom of God to you? How valuable is having a relationship with the Lord to you? Now, the, 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 the situation may be that you stumbled upon the gospel message initially. That's kind of my story. You know, back when I was 17 years old, I wasn't deliberately out there trying to find truth and meaning in life. And, you know, I wasn't trying to do that. I just kind of stumbled upon the gospel message. And once I realized what it was, you know, it was just like, man, I got to get me some of this. You know, I mean, I was all in. But now for other people, and this may describe some of you, you went on a deliberate search for truth and meaning in life. And you may have even checked and studied various different religions. You may have gone to different churches. You may have gone to like a Hindu temple or a synagogue or something like that. And then eventually when you found the gospel message, you were like all in with that. See, that's what these two parables are talking about. The difference is whether you stumbled upon the the thing of value, or whether you were deliberately looking for it. But once you've found it, what did you do? And that's, that's basic thought, the basic thought that I want to leave you with here today, is how much do you value your relationship with the Lord? How important is it to you? Is it just kind of a fringe part of your life? Kind of like if your life was represented by a pie that was sliced up in all these different triangular pieces that, well, your relationship with the Lord represents one of those pieces. Your job represents another one. Your family represents another one. Your hobbies represent another one. And so in that sense, your walk with the Lord is like just one small part of your life. Is that the way you're approaching everything? Or is your relationship with the Lord the centerpiece. It's all about this. Everything else in your life revolves around it. See, that's what these parables are talking about. Where you are, the word isn't used here, but it sounds like it's being described. You are sold out for Christ. You know, because they sell out everything that they own in order to acquire the special treasure. Are you sold out for Christ? Lock, stock, and barrel. 
100% all in for the Lord? Or do you just kind of dabble in your faith? Is it kind of a fringe part of your life? Well, I hope that isn't descriptive of your walk with the Lord. He needs to be so much more than that. That's the whole point Jesus was trying to get at. Let's be sold out for Christ. Everything else is secondary in our life. That doesn't mean that everything else is unimportant. It just means that our walk with the Lord is primary. It's our first love. He's number one in our life. That's my prayer for you today. All right, we'll see you later. Have a good week.